All right, question number eight. Uh, we saw how to do these problems the long way in the, okay. So we saw how to do the problems the long way earlier in the, earlier in part one of our review sheet. Now we're gonna teach you guys how to cheat using your calculator. It's super important what you enter into your calculator. You can't just enter what you want. The first thing I want you to do is we're gonna take the original question, we're gonna plug it in. So hit the parentheses sign because we're gonna need to group the quantity that's in the numerator together. So parenthesis, square root 5, whoops, made a mistake, just got to go back and fix that, square root 5, and you close the parenthesis. So that's now just square root 5 minus 4. Now the second parenthesis I'm about to put up, that takes it and groups it all together. You know, so all that stuff is basically stuff in the, in the, in the numerator. Divided by parenthesis 2 plus the square root of 5. And we got to close the bracket for the 5, for the radical 5, and then close it for the denominator. Now here's what you do. You hit enter. It produces a random number. Now all you have to do is go back through your multiple choice answers and find the one that matches. Let's take a look at A to give you an example. I'm not going to plug in each one of them, but let's plug in A. Parenthesis, negative 3, radical 5. Close the bracket for the 5. Close the bracket for the top divided by 7. That one doesn't work. So you're out. And you would continue doing this for choices B, choices C. And let's check choice D. Let's just see if, it, if it's the one that works. 13 minus 6 square root of 5. Uh, and hit enter. And yeah, it's the one that matches. Good to go. All right, so now we saw how to solve the problem using the calculator. Let's try and solve it the long way by hand. How do you solve a problem like this? Multiply by, Multiply by the conjugate. So we're going to be multiplying by 2 minus the square root of 5 over 2 minus the square root of 5. And we have to do the most annoying thing ever. Oh, my God. What do we have to do? Oh, foil. The most annoying thing ever. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, ooh, I forgot to do something. I forgot to put parentheses around these to remind myself to foil. Dumb me. Okay, so this is 2 square root 5. This is going to be negative the square root of 25. This is going to be minus 8. And this is going to be plus 4 square root 5. All over. Let's do the bottom. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2 square root 5, plus 2 square root 5, minus the square root of 25. Now, I don't feel like rewriting the problem over again. That would take a lot of time. So I'm going to try and reduce my work uh, using what I've gotten written up. The square root of 25 is 5. Let's see if there's anything else up here that I can do. Ooh, square root of 25 over here is 5. And now let's, let's just reduce. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Two, oh, that's right, good suggestion. Yeah, in the denominator, negative 2 radical 5 and positive 2 radical 5 just can't just cross out. Let's take care of the top. 2 radical 5 plus 4 radical 5 is 6 radical 5. Negative 5 minus 8 is negative 13. All over 4 minus 5 negative 1. So uh, that's one answer that we could get. We could rewrite this and say that this is the same thing as saying negative 6 radical 5 plus 13. And that can further be rewritten by saying, by moving the 13 to the front and saying that this is 13 minus 6 radical 5. And there you go. That's the answer. That's how to do it the long way. And Okay, so, so we're going to tackle these problems in our, in our short answer section by doing, them out long way, by doing them out the long way. But for right now, we're going, to tackle, we're going to show you how to do them without doing any work, just using the calculator. Okay, so here's what you do. Just take your multiple choice answers and plug them into the original problem. Let's test out the first one. So just throw 5 in for every time you see an x. So that's going to be 5 plus 11 plus 1 equals 5. 5 plus 11 is 16. 16 plus 1 equals 5. Square root of 16 is 4. Does 4 plus 1 equal 5? 
Oh my gosh. So this works, which automatically means this is out and this is out. Oh, that's amazing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, here's what we have to do. Choice C says that both 5 and negative 2 work. So we got to check to make sure that negative 2 works in this one. So now let's, let's just check. Let's throw negative 2 in here. Negative 2 plus 11 plus 1 equals negative 2. Oh, this is going to be 9 plus 1 equals negative 2. 3 plus 1. Does 3 plus 1 equal negative 2? No. So you're out. So the final answer is just choice A. All right. Problem number 10. Problem number 10. Problem number 10. It's a right triangle. And I'm asking you to find that last side. Right triangle. How do you solve it? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a is one of the legs. b is one of the legs. That never changes. c is the hypotenuse, the longest side. Plug all these bad boys in. So we got the uh, x squared plus the square root of 5 squared equals 4 radical 3 squared. So x squared is just x squared. Radical 5 squared is, is just 5, right? It's 5. Anytime you square a radical, you just get the number underneath. And this, people in the other classes also had trouble. 4 radical 3 squared, that 4 radical 3 times 4 radical 3, yep, which turns out to be 16 times 3, when 16 times 3 is what? 48. So we got x squared plus 5 equals, you know, let's write it out. That's 16 times the square root of 9, and that's 16 times 3, that's 48. So x squared plus 5 equals 48, and we're going to subtract 5 from each side, cross these off. x squared equals 43. x squared equals 43. So, so we got x squared equals 43. How do you find out how much x is? You square root both sides. Square root both sides, and x is going to be equal to the square root of 43. And I think that should be the answer that you're looking for, right? Here we go. Okay, question number 11. This, in fact, is actually the difference of two perfect squares. You see, these are two conjugates being multiplied by each other. So you can take a really quick shortcut. Not a lot of people understood it, but I'm going to present it to you again. And then we're going to see why the shortcut works using the long way. Okay, so the shortcut is you just take the two numbers in the front and you square them up. So that's going to be 11 squared. And you can take the two numbers at the end, you square them up. Radical 5 squared, and you subtract them because this is the difference of two perfect squares factored. Okay, so 11 squared is just 11, 5 squared is just 5, and the answer is 6. Okay, still a lot of people having trouble with the shortcut, so we're going to do it out the long way. The long way. We just FOIL, and this works every single time. So square root 11 times square root 11 is square root of 121. Square root 11 times uh, positive 5 is just, you know, positive square root of 55 because you multiply the numbers underneath. Same deal over here. So we're going to get something that's going to cancel away with the, with the one before it. And finally, these guys. Negative 5 times negative, negative square root of 5 times positive square root of 5 is negative square root of 25. Woo! Right? These two, reduce, these two cancel off. The square root of 121 is 11. The square root of 25 is 5. And we get the same answer, just a little bit longer. Okay. Question number 12, question number 12, you can attack this question in the calculator because it's a multiple choice question, but we're going to show it out the long way. So how do you get rid of this, this denominator that has a radical? Yes. You multiply it by its conjugate. Excellent. So the conjugate is just the original with the sign changed in between. We're going to multiply it out, put parentheses around everything. Distribute this 12 inside. Okay, so 12 times 3 is 36. 12 times negative radical 3 is negative 12 radical 3. We're going to distribute 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times negative radical 3 is negative 3 rad 3. 
this is going to be, these two multiplied together are plus 3 rad 3. And finally, we have negative square root of 9. We're just going to reduce really fast. These two cancel out. It's the same thing. The square root of 9 is just 3. So we have 36 minus 12 rad 3 all over 6. Are we done? No way. Go, tell me. Yeah, 6 goes into all of these guys, right? 6 goes into itself. Let's find a good color that I haven't used. 6 goes into itself once, 36 6 times, and 12 2 times. So final answer, 6 minus 2 radical 3 all over 1. All right, question number 13. Easy, too easy, drill sergeant, right? Too easy. You know what you do? Make a big radical. Make a big radical out of this. What's 48 divided by 3? Like this. 16, of course, because you guys are amazing math students. And the answer is just 4. Okay. Right. So, question number 14. We, we are going to do question number 14 the, the long way as soon as we get to the short answer section. But we're, we're, right now, I'm trying to teach uh, test-taking strategies. So, here we go. What are we going to do? What's the strategy for solving this problem? Plug it in, plug it in. Good. All right. You just got to be careful of how you plug it in. Grammar matters a lot, and there's no spell check in a calculator. So, plus one. And the two parentheses, notice them. Notice them. Group it all together. That's all the stuff in the, in the numerator. Let's do the same thing for the bottom. Minus one. Then you hit enter. Ooh, that's a random number. What kind of number is that? Nope. Irrational. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Why is it irrational? Good, good, good question. Doesn't have a pattern. Now check it out. You got that number. What does that mean? That means B is out and C is out. Okay. So now let's check. Let's see if choice A works. 2 plus the square root of 3. Booyah. Choice A it is.